so we had to decide from the beginning what things were comparable between Aiden and, and Marcus and what things would be different. We focused on parkour. We wanted Marcus to be a lot better at parkour than Aiden. And we're not talking about just like climbing on things, but like being able to like flow and chain moves together. So he's a pretty good fighter. But he's got some interesting quirks too. Uh, he's a more expressive guy. We try to it's crazy. We, we got it. The new idea for hacking and wash is to still let the player uh, create his own solutions. We're adding a lot more depth to hacking. So you have a lot more control, a lot more flexibility in how you hack the world. So one big category of hacking and Watch Dogs 2 is the entire branch of pushing remote controls to its limit. One of the big things on Watch Dogs is hacking vehicles. I think this is a real game changer because vehicles are everywhere in the world, and if you can hack into the drive system of a car, you can pretty much drive it wherever you want. So making sure if you see a forklift in the world, it shouldn't be a forklift. You can just like move the box up down. You should just like a camera, press a button and become that thing. One of the core things that we're doing is we're opening up the game with Watch Dogs 2. You can hack every character. You can hack every car in the game and you can hack most of the electronics within the city. So that's a lot of easier. So if you want to play the game completely non-lethal and not actually kill anybody, you can totally do that. We're playing with a lot more uh, crafted items and a, a lot more of little devices that you can use. One of the things that people kind of like that we've done, they really like what we've done, is we've created toys for Marcus. He has an RC jumper. It's got little wheels, and it's even got this little robotic arm that he can sort of deploy, and he can interact with things. He can unplug things and replug them and take out screws. That's a neat little toy. And then the other gadget he's got is this quadcopter. And it's more about scouting and being the eye in the sky. First person view on it is incredible, because you're just zipping through the city. It feels like you're flying. Well, you are flying. It's been multiple ways. For example, I could hack one person and distract them, have their phone ringing so they look at their phone uh, to create a distraction. Later on in the game, you'll also be able to do things we call mass hacking, which is, well, why only hack one if you can hack them all? There's one thing that I really believe about Watch Dogs players is that there is no Watch Dogs player. There are many types of Watch Dogs players. You should be deciding how you want to play the game. So that means you can play a mission full gun blazing, that's the way you like to play. Full stealth. Or through hacking only, project yourself in computers, take control of electronics, influence people, and try to get to your goal that way. We try to really support all players' types across all different styles of play, and also allow players to combine and mash these styles and play together, too. If you've been playing a certain way for a while, we want the game to kind of challenge you to try different things, but also not force you into playing the game a certain way. We work to improve the driving, make it more accessible, while keeping all the different styles of vehicles and adding a lot of physics and feel to all the vehicles. So we keep the depth, but have more accessibility. The team is super happy with the result we've had, and I hope gamers will be just as excited. We are very excited by the potential of what we call Seamless Online. We start doing that in Watch Dogs 1, so we're expanding on that. We cross path with friends in the city. So you playing in single player and you're crossing path with another player who's also playing in single player. Both of you are members of DeadSec, so you're friends, and you can just walk up to each other, you know, say hello, hit the button, and form a co-op team. And what we're gonna be showing in the next couple of months is an example of how those things work together to create magical gameplay moments. The city of San Francisco and the whole Bay Area is exciting, it's vast. You're gonna find a, a ton of things to do that are unique to you. Basically build your own moments. You know, create a situation that you start laughing at and you say, wow, this happened, and you wanna share it with friends. You don't wanna just be like a roller coaster, a theme park ride where I go through all the same beats as everybody else. You decide what you wanna be spending your time doing. That can be multiplayer, that can be focusing on stories, that can be just exploring the world. Whichever activity you do, we're gonna make sure you get rewarded to get you closer to the end game. That's kind of the promise we're making to gamers.
You, you always know it when something starts to click, it starts to work. Everything changed. You stop seeing individual components, animations, or, or texture maps, or vehicles. You just start to see the experience as a whole. It changes on the floor. People get excited about it. This is it. It exists. We are always making the game with the player in mind. They have always been the driving force. When you come with a sequel that really earns its two, you know, that really does a lot of new things, that has a lot of surprises, it's a great feeling. In the end, there's nothing more.